I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. Oh yes, God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us for our online service. You know, it's kind of crazy how when you're committed to something, you will do just about anything. For instance, recently we had some heavy uh, rain and wind damage on our facility, and I saw some tiles were messed up on the roof, and so one of our board members and I, Lauren, were talking about it, and I decided just to go up onto the roof and see if we could fix the tiles ourselves. And I have to say, there was a lot more damage than I expected, and it's way up there. Yes, it's it is. It's <laughs> way, way up there. And uh, and just traversing that space, and, and I know that's not your favorite place to see me. True. Um, but, but as I was up there, I was just reminded how important it is to look at the things that maybe other people don't see or the things that aren't obvious and deal with those because they can cause bigger problems later. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, it just came to me. <laughs> well, I want to share a verse from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. You know, this was a verse that we just recently looked at in our Bible study with the ladies, and it's so easy for us to just take those steps and just make our own plans and sometimes leave God out. Mm. But God wants us to commit what we do to him, and he says that he will lead us and he will guide us. Absolutely. And that's so important to have the Lord guide us. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be transparent with you. When I was walking on the ridge of the roof up there, way mm -hmm. up there, I was talking to the Lord a lot. <laughs> in fact, let's talk to him right now, shall we? Why don't we go ahead and bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, I just thank you that even when we're in kind of silly moods, Lord, you love us. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we're a little overwhelmed and it feels like things are really weighing down on us, you love us. God, you yes. love us all the time. You are committed to us. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would reflect that kind of commitment mm -hmm. in the way that we treat you and serve you and share your good news with others. God, I pray that as we do that, we would see your will accomplished in us and through us. God, and I lift up our church family to you. I pray, God, that you would just pour out your blessings on them. And Lord, I just pray that you would lead them and guide them in everything that they do, Lord God. May they be in tune with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take a few minutes and worship together. give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Lord you give life you are love bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath, God, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Oh, 
all the earth will shout your praise. I love that. If you know this part, sing it right where you are. Here we go. All the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord? It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath, God, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Oh, great are you, Lord. Great and awesome and mighty. Great are you. Have you ever tried to purchase a ticket to a concert, movie, game, or event that you really wanted to see, only to discover that it was completely sold out? While that may be frustrating for us as consumers, selling out is fantastic for bands, brands, producers, owners, coaches, athletes, advertisers, manufacturers, merchandisers, and promoters. In fact, sold out crowds often result in expanded schedules and new opportunities. When we hear that a flight is sold out, a hotel is sold out, or our favorite destination is sold out, it can prompt us to plan further ahead and even invest more in the things that matter most to us, our time, talent, and treasures. Pretty soon, we could be called sold out to whatever it is we want most. For instance, our family tends to prefer staying in hotels over camping out, but we have enjoyed many camping trips with close friends and extended family. Two of our favorites are Fallen Leaf Lake near Tahoe, California and Yosemite National Park. When we decide to plan a trip to either of these destinations, we're so sold out that we set alarms and log onto multiple devices to try to book sites as soon as they are made available because we know that they will be sold out within seconds and we'll have to wait another year if we miss out. Likewise, as followers of Jesus, if we really want to see a turnaround in our lives, families, work, school, relationships, church, community, society, and our world, we need to be sold out for Jesus. You might even say that being sold out is what it really means to follow Jesus because he paid the price for our sin on the cross. But some struggle to experience a turnaround because they're not completely sold out. So let's turn to Luke 18, beginning at verse 18, where we read, A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, 
how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us through your word. Sometimes the truth that you speak to our hearts is difficult for us to process, and yet, God, we know that you know what's best for us. And Father, we don't just want to be casual in our faith. We want to be completely sold out for Jesus so that we can see a turnaround in our lives, in our families, in our relationship, our church, our community, our society, and in our world. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we are sold out for you, that your light would shine through us even more brightly so that many would enter into a saving relationship with you. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all share the story of the man who has commonly become known as the rich young ruler. This is a religious man who was concerned about his reputation and his eternal destination. Recognizing the authority of Jesus, he wanted to curry favor with Jesus, to receive the blessing of Jesus, and perhaps to earn the respect of Jesus. He may have wanted a pat on the back more than a turnaround, but Jesus wanted more for him. This is evident in all three accounts of the rich young ruler asking Jesus about the one thing he still needed to do in order to inherit eternal life. In Mark 10, 17, we read, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This guy didn't get it. The last time I checked... Most of the time, inheritance doesn't require the recipient to do anything. I suppose there could be strings attached, but usually there aren't. Just saying. Obviously, in kneeling before Jesus and addressing him as good teacher, the rich young ruler made a public display of, ref of respect that we'll take as being entirely sincere. After all, he's never been labeled the insincere young ruler. Perhaps this is because, despite his youth, he realized that it is important to look humble and submissive to those with greater authority than your own. While heirs seldom earn their inheritance, they certainly don't want to be disinherited because of a strained relationship with a potential benefactor. But the love of Jesus isn't conditional. Jesus doesn't love us based on what we do. Jesus loves us as we are, recognizing that the rich young ruler had done his best to follow Old Testament law, Jesus addressed the condition of his heart. You see, the rich young ruler had a heart deficiency, and the one thing Jesus would ask of those who follow him is a change of heart. In Mark 10, 21 and 22, we read, Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, Go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. I want to clarify something here. Jesus was asking for something that would have a major financial impact on this rich young ruler. But I believe it isn't just about money. Should all followers of Jesus be generous in financial giving? Yes, but Jesus isn't merely raising a money issue. This is absolutely a heart issue that addresses pride, pleasures, and priorities that are very personal. For the rich young ruler, status, respect, luxury, comfort, and wealth were his idols, the false gods that kept him from being totally sold out to the one true God. For each of us, the one thing that Jesus requires is that following him must be the most important thing in our lives. He must take priority over everyone and everything. Being with Jesus empowers us to become like Jesus to the point that our faith in him becomes the one thing that defines us. And this kind of selflessness is never easy for us. But this isn't about buying our salvation. It's about being bought out by the blood of Jesus who paid the ransom for our sin on the cross.
That's what it means to be sold out for Jesus. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write about the one thing in Philippians 3, 12 through 14, where we read, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. There's a direct parallel between the one thing that the rich young ruler lacked and the one thing that Paul decided to do. But this one thing involves two parts. Part one is letting go. You see, the rich young ruler had to let go of his materialism while Paul had to let go of his past accomplishments. They're similar, but personal. Part two is loving like Jesus. The rich young ruler needed to give his wealth to those in need while Paul needed to give the grace he had received. And in so doing, both would receive their prize or treasure in heaven. The one thing may seem like the hardest thing we'll ever have to do, but whether or not we are willing to do the one thing that Jesus asks of us, to obey him by letting go and loving like he does, our willingness to obey Jesus reveals the hard truth about our hearts. In Matthew 19, 22 through 24, we read, when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Hard is not impossible. Jesus said it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus did not say it is impossible. And this reminds me of the line that Man Anthony Hopkins' character said in Mission Impossible 2. Well, this is not mission difficult, Mr. Hunt. It's mission impossible. Difficult should be a walk in the park for you. All right, we're not actors playing secret agents in an action adventure, but we are agents of the Most High God. Being like Jesus with difficult things may seem overwhelming to us, and we may begin to feel discouraged and even wrestle with walking away like the rich young ruler did. But difficult is not impossible. The hard truth is that the more we become like Jesus, the more difficult becomes like a walk in the park for us. In Luke 18, 26 and 27, we read, Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. It's hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven, but not impossible. It's hard to let go of status, respect, luxury, comfort, and wealth, but not impossible. It's hard for the 13 colonies in North America to win their freedom from Great Britain, but not impossible. It was hard to put a man on the moon, but not impossible. It can be hard to get out of bed in the morning, but not impossible. It was hard for Julie Andrews to sing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious in the movie Mary Poppins, but not impossible. In fact, she even said it somewhat backwards, docious alley exeistic fragi cali rupus. I doubt that it was really that hard for the creative team at Disney to get a gifted actress and vocalist used to, to singing amazing songs to sing that song in 1964. And the hard truth is that no turnaround is too hard for God. In Jeremiah 32, 17, we read, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. He made the heavens and the earth by his great power. No turnaround in our hearts, finances, health, families, relationships, church, community, society, or our world is too hard for the Lord. I have seen him turn things around again and again. And that's why I'm sold out for Jesus. Being sold out for Jesus doesn't mean that we'll never have another question or wrestle with fear or pride. Being sold out for Jesus 
means being confident that he is the answer to our every need. Being sold out for Jesus compels us to turn to Jesus and expect great things over and over again, time and time again. This is the great exchange. When we give him our all, which isn't much, he gives us his all, which is everything we'll ever need. In Mark 10, 28, we read, Then Peter spoke up, We have left everything to follow you. The Bible never called Peter or any of the other disciples rich, like we read about the rich young ruler. Peter was a fisherman. He probably didn't have great financial wealth. But giving everything is hard for everyone. Jesus understands that, and he doesn't give back to us proportionately. The great exchange, when we give our all to Jesus, is always disproportionate in our favor. In Mark's account of this interaction, Jesus gave a mind-blowing response to his sold-out followers, who left everything to see a turnaround that only he could produce. In Mark 10, 29-31, we read, Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Okay, I could have easily stopped halfway through verse 30, where Jesus offers a hundredfold return on investment. Come on! Stopping there is called the prosperity gospel. But Jesus also promised that when we follow him, we will face adversity, persecutions. And frankly, I don't like that persecutions is plural, not singular, in this particular passage or anywhere else. You see, Everything in this world will pass away. Wealth, pleasures, status, adversity, disease, and persecution. But in the age to come, we will receive eternal life. We will walk the streets of gold, have no more suffering, abide in the presence of the Lord forever. The stuff in the here and now is just a deposit toward what is to come. And giving of our time, talent, and treasures is not our way of buying the great exchange. We give our time, talent, and treasures in response to the turnaround that has occurred in our hearts by the grace of God. You see, that's the great exchange. Our worst for His best. In Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, we read, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This seems like a paradox. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, but we are not saved by our good works. The eternal life turnaround, the salvation turnaround, the becoming part of the family of God turnaround comes only by God's grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't telling the rich young ruler how to earn eternal life. Jesus tells us all that we cannot earn eternal life. But there will be evidence that we have received His gift that is greater than all the wealth in the world. That's how everyone will know that we are sold out and not just a bunch of sellouts. Now, the three parallel accounts of the rich young ruler aren't the only places where Jesus gave the instruction to sell possessions and give to the poor. We find a similar instruction earlier in the book of Luke. In Luke 12, 32 through 34, we read, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me repeat that last verse. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The rich young ruler was depositing his time, talent, and treasure in the wrong bank. 
When we only invest in areas we can see, touch, taste, and enjoy, we'll only receive the benefit as long as we can see, touch, taste, and enjoy the return on our investment in this life. But when we invest in the work of the Lord, we are investing in eternity. Jesus calls us to turn around and mature from only making short-term lifelong investments to making long-term eternal investments. That's evidence that we are really sold out for Jesus. When we're sold out, we are willing to do the one thing that Jesus asks of us, which may seem like the hardest thing in our lives. When we're sold out, we can handle the hard truth that we actually need the Lord and we can't make it without him. When we're sold out, we get to enjoy the benefit of the great exchange because Jesus paid the price to set us free from sin so that we can receive the gift of eternal life through him. This is the greatest turnaround. If you're not sold out for Jesus, why not turn to Jesus today and expect great things? Why not receive the greatest turnaround for yourself right now? I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is actually as easy as A, B, C. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus already paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross. And the letter C stands for choose. And that's exactly what I'd like to invite you to do right now, to choose for yourself to follow Jesus. If you're ready to make that choice and take that first step in the right direction, then please bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this simple prayer with me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good, and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned, and I ask you to forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross and you conquered death when you rose from the grave. And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and each day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. I believe that a significant turnaround is taking place right now as we share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's continue to turn to Jesus and expect great things because the best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus' name. We'll sing together, Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak are made strong in the Savior's love. Changing grace in 
come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone I'll faultless stand before Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak are made strong in the Savior's love, and through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Lord of I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or annoy if you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine.
If you've been blessed by our online services and would like to support the ministries and missions efforts of Radiant Life Church, you can visit our website at radiantlifelodi.com and click the donate link at the top of the homepage. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord through your generosity. God, turn it around, turn it around.